Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. In the last episode, we learned more about the relationship between Mike, Rachel, and Braintree. Mike being the stalker of Rachel, and Braintree being the creepy person with the revolver, who we actually met in that world with all the apes. The person who fell down super hard and somehow didn't get hurt. Yeah, that's Braintree, and according to Rachel, Braintree peeled Mike's skin off. And a dude who lives nearby who liked video games apparently recorded that. No, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, let's listen to the tape. Preemptive content warning? You put the skinned mic cassette into the stereo. How do you like that, you sick little freak? You had it coming to you. These clothes are disgusting. Get them out of my sight. I know. It'll be perfect to wrap his body in. Hold it. You! Hold it. I think you I'll snooping around again? Myself. Get your ass out Hold of here before it. you Hold really it. piss me Hold off. Hold it. Hold it. I think I'll keep that one for myself. Hold it, I think I'll keep that one for myself. I'm not sure what they were saying at the very end there, but I think Braintree was telling the video game person who was recording it to stop snooping around. Yeah, I'm going to boost that audio so that you can hear it, but that last part was too hard for me to hear. Yeah, okay, well that wasn't graphic, I guess. I think the next thing to do is probably slip this note under my door, which I forgot to do before I went in here. I'm hoping that's the torn off part from the note left by either me or the person who used to live in my apartment. Right, remember that they found Rachel's key and then accidentally lost it before they could give it to the superintendent or back to Rachel. And then part of that note saying where they last saw it was torn off by Mike, apparently. And I think this might be the other part, which would tell me where that key is, and uh, I think that's the only thing I can do at the moment, so let me head back to the other world and put that under my door. Actually, putting that note under my door isn't the very last thing I can do. There's actually a couple doors up on the third floor that I still haven't opened yet. Um, this one... this one's mine, right? Yeah, this one's mine. I probably can't get into my own door. I would assume. Um... This is Eileen's, which I don't have the key for. It's the one that's missing from the superintendent's key ring, but this one I should be able to get inside of. So, need to check out this apartment, see if I can get into my own room, put the note under the door, and even before that, I want to go get my special sword back from room 101. Remember I stabbed that ghost with it and left it here? Well, I don't want to forget it. Third floor. 304. Oh, statues of dogs. Haven't I seen those before? Were they in this game or a different game? I don't remember. I feel like they might have been in Silent Hill 3. Got tea for two served on the table. Okay, that's it. Just a little bit of ammo. Please be useful, please be useful, please be useful. It's so bloody it's hard to read. Rachel, love you, always, watching window, protect you with love, Mike. That's not it. 
Oh, I think I just found it. So I was just looking through all the different memos that I have, trying to find a clue. Mike's diary. Oh, my beautiful Rachel, what's with the note on the red paper? I thought you'd written a note back to me, but I guess maybe it was somewhere else. He took it along with my clothes. Those were my best clothes. Right, we also heard in the tape something about the clothes. Being dirty, take them away from me. Where did those clothes end up? Are they in... Braintree's apartment? Also, I, I thought... I, I thought Mike died. I thought Mike was killed by Braintree. This obviously was written after. Just tortured him a little, I guess? Okay. Okay, I've spent a very long time, like about a half hour, just kind of running around and trying to figure out what to do. I feel like I need to find Mike's clothes, because I listened to that tape again. And, uh, yeah, Braintree mentions, like, those clothes are disgusting, get them out of my sight. And then I assume it's Rachel in the room as well, who says, yeah, we should wrap his body in them. Obviously, they didn't actually end up killing Mike, though, because Mike, Mike wrote that message after they had been beaten up slash skinned? Whatever happened. Um, but yeah, the clothes went somewhere else. Get them out of my sight. But then at the end of the tape, a uh, very, like, barely lucid sounding Mike was saying, I'll keep that one. I'll keep that one. I'll keep that one. The piece of clothes, I assume. So I'm assuming all this mention of Mike's clothes, that they have a note inside of them. So I've been looking at every piece of clothes I can find anywhere. In some of the hallways, there's like some torn up, there's like a torn up shirt, there's like a torn up pair of pants, there's Rachel's nurse uniform, there's a bloody shirt in the alcoholics apartment, but none of those have anything in them. And I was thinking maybe Mike's apartment would have their shirt in it, because they said, I'll keep that one, I'll keep that one, went there, nothing. So I just ended up looking up a walkthrough. I haven't used it to spoil the solution entirely. I'm just trying to go step by step and see if I missed something. And I found the first thing that I missed that might lead me to a solution, and I haven't read any further. It says in room 202, it says, if you look in the fridge, you'll find a dead cat and another red letter. It smells terrible. Open it up. Yes. It's wrapped up in these torn, bloody jeans. That's probably Mike's clothes, I assume. It's the body of a dead cat. There's a torn red paper in one of the pockets. Let's take it. This is a ridiculous puzzle. I mean, I've explored these rooms thoroughly, each one at least multiple times. There's absolutely no indication on this fridge that you can open it. There's nothing suggestive about it. The door isn't ajar, it's not somehow brighter than everything else around it. Henry doesn't say anything about how bad it smells unless you, like, try to activate the fridge itself. I've seen a million fridges, none of them I can do anything with in any of these other apartments. Why would I bother trying this one? That's a really bad puzzle. Anyway, let me go see what that note says. Uh. Shit, that's Eileen. Oh. Things are going bad. Remember the last time we looked in there, we saw them, they were like watching the TV and weird noises were coming from it and it looked like they were getting hurt by it, like it was hurting them. And now they can't get out, which means they're trapped in the room just like I was, I think. And it sounds like they're also still getting hurt. Shit. Well, I definitely think I'm on the right track with this note then if, if I triggered that just by getting it. Oh yeah. I had a really wicked headache that day and just collapsed on the bed. Maybe if I look near the bed in my room, a 302's bedroom, I'll find it. I get headaches every day now. It's terrible. What am I going to do? It is terrible. By the way, I've had headaches every single day of my life for like the past eight years or so. 
Except for the past couple months when I finally started getting on prescription drugs to try to deal with it. Yeah, so I thought the key might be in my apartment, because this I know that the note talking about finding the key was written by the person who was in my apartment before. I figured it was in here. I wonder if you can find it, though. If you don't read that note, you probably have to trigger it by reading that. And before I grab it, let's check on Eileen. I should peer through the front door, too. The silence is eerie. I almost wish there was something going on out there. Oh. There's something on the ground. Wait, doll key. Key with a girl's doll keychain attached. That doll looks like the same one that the older Walter Sullivan, or whoever that is, gave me. It looks like the same doll. I put the doll in here, figured I didn't need it. Yeah, that is definitely the same doll. I kind of want to take it with me, but I don't have much space. You know, actually, I'll take it with me and then just dump 10 rounds for the pistol. That should be fine. Alright, here we go. Are they still banging on the door? I hope they are, because that means they're alive. <laughs> Shit. Twentieth victim. Too late. Why was Eileen thankful? Thanks, kid. For killing me? And then they also said, Did you find your mom? So we know that they were born here in my apartment. About ten years ago. Or no, thirty years ago. And that the parents ran away and left the kid in the apartment. So they're searching for their mom. It's nighttime now. It 
feels very quiet and lonely. I don't think I can protect myself. He's truly insane. I can't hold on any longer. His power can't be measured. I was so scared today that I sealed off the back of the storage room. I wonder if Eileen Galvin is okay. She has no idea what's going on. But she's in danger nevertheless. July 13th. Wait. The notes we've seen in the past that have come from the journalist who used to live in my apartment. That was from a while ago. That note, I mean, I don't know what the day is now, but it's talking about Eileen Galvin. I think that's the first time one of those red notes is ever mentioned. Eileen. Eileen wasn't very old. Was that still written by the journalist, or is that now written by me or something? There it is. I've been waiting for that, so I didn't misremember. Some kind of strange paper stuck in here. Succubus talisman. Card with some kind of frightening demon on it. So I assume the person they're talking about here, he's, uh, I can't hold on any longer, his power can't be measured, don't think I can protect myself. I assume that's talking about Walter Sullivan, the kid slash 30 year old person who gave me the doll. And this also, I was so scared today that I sealed off the back of the storage room. The back of the storage room? I mean, is this the storage room? I guess. What is there to seal off? What would you seal? Yeah, nothing I can do in here. Let's take a peek outside. And listen to the radio. It's probably something about Eileen's murder on the radio. Never mind. Eileen. It's been sealed. Is this what they meant by sealed off? It's not a storage room though, this is the bathroom. Maybe it used to be a storage room, and that was written 10 years ago. The hole is blocked. What the hell do I do now? Wait, what's that? That's where that ghost came out at the beginning of the game, isn't it? Where there was a head coming out of the wall? What's this? Okay, something interesting has happened. Something very subtle. Remember how we've looked at these pictures before, and for most of them it's something like, oh yeah, that's a picture of the lighthouse that I took in, in Silent Hill when we visited it and talked a little bit about Silent Hill. That's not the description I get anymore. I didn't think anything of it when I took the picture, but now it gives me a seriously creepy feeling. There are scraps from magazine articles, but 
I don't remember cutting them out. Maybe it's my imagination, but I get that weird feeling looking at this photo, too. Maybe it's just my nerves playing tricks on me, but this photo gives me a weird feeling. So now it's no longer just a, a piece of history like, oh yeah, I did that and that. Now these things are all just weird, like I don't remember cutting this out. These photos make me feel weird. Why? I wonder if it's something... I wonder if something's changed with who I am or the space. It's never been super clear what happened back then versus what is real now. Present versus past, it seems to be getting blurred. So they took the victim to St. Jerome's, huh? Yeah, she's not gonna make it. She had numbers in her back, too. Walter Sullivan copycat. Round three, huh? Well, they never got the scumbag behind round two a few years back. Maybe it's the same guy. Oh, what if one, two, and three? Oh, what if they're all the same guy? What the hell are you talking about? You know Sullivan killed himself. The weird thing is, there were no clues. Crime scenes were always spotless. No fingerprints, no fibers, nothing. Just the numbers, two, zero, one, two, one. I've been a cop for a long time, but I never seen a case like this one. It's almost like, like they were killed by a ghost or something. Not sure why that conversation triggered now. Hold on though, they said this is Walter Sullivan round three or whatever they said, right? Like the third, or the, the second copycat, the original first copycat, and then second copycat, which is the third round of murders. The third round? What do they mean third round? I thought this was the second. The first was ten, and then this one was ten. That's two. So what do they mean third? I've spent a ridiculous amount of time wandering around my room, and I finally just looked up a walkthrough, and it says you have to look for a demon's face in your laundry room. I thought I'd have to do something with this, because this is where the face came from at the beginning of the game. But there's a face in my laundry room? I went in there, but I didn't see one. Oh. It's some kind of stain. Come to think of it, it also looks like an evil demon. Use the succubus talisman. Strange. Sounded like I opened something up, and now that's just gone. Yeah, the walkthrough mentioned at this point you have to use the placards that you got. The four placards. The one of watchfulness, chaos, source, and temptation. What the hell? After he did the ritual of the Holy Assumption... Other worlds began to force their way into his universe and it began to swell horribly. But his universe is different than ours. It has limits. And in the limits of that universe, he rules as a king. And in the deepest part of his kingdom is his mother. Okay, well now I know the path forwards. Gotta put all the placards in the right spot. And then... <laughs> we'll see what happens after that. All right, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go through probably another hole in the wall, but this time we're going to make it. <laughs>